Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How is everyone doing on this beautiful day? I pray all is well. I pray that your afternoon has gotten off to an amazing start. But if not, you can always hit that reset button and simply start all over again. I just wanted to hop on for a few minutes. It's been um, it's been a few days since I've been on, so I wanted to just hop on, see how everyone is doing, and just share a little devotional with you. I pray that whatever you may be going through or whatever you may be facing, that this encourages you somehow. You know, we never know who needs to be encouraged because we never know... Um, we never know what someone is going through. I used to say everyone is going through. I don't say that anymore because I don't believe everyone is going. I don't believe everybody is going through, but there are, there are many of us that are going through. And so God doesn't want us to be discouraged. He wants us to be encouraged because suffering is a part of this journey. We're not exempt because we are follower of Christ. Contrary, we are a magnet. The moment we surrender and start to follow Christ, the enemy gets busy. And he will attack any and everything that is connected to you to draw you back, to get you back, to get you to turn to get you to lose faith, to get you to lose doubt. And God, on the other hand, is saying, just trust me. I got you. Trust me. I know the ending before the beginning. I got you. If you can just hold on and trust me for a little while longer, I'm going to bring you through. I'm going to bring you out. I know it's not easy. I know you feel forsaken. I know you feel forgotten about. But I have you in the palm of my hand. I am concerned about what you're going through. But if you can just hold on for a little while longer, I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to set you free. I'm going to bring you out. I'm going to bring you through. Jesus had to go through. He didn't want to. Why do you think he went up three times praying, Lord, Father, can you pass this cup? Sometime we're going to face things. Sometime we're going to go through things that the flesh does not want to go through. And we're asking him, can you pass this cup? And not even pass it to someone else. Because sometimes we go through things we don't even want anyone else to go through. But Lord, can you just take it from me so I don't have to go through it? But nevertheless, Jesus said, can you pass this cup? And at some point, he said, nevertheless, he understood that the assignment was for him. And that it was something that he had to complete. It, he realized it was something that he had to go through. And he said, not my will. This is not what I'm choosing. This is not what I want to do. But you willed this to me because you had confidence in me. And because you had confidence in me, I'm going to go through this thing. I'm going to stand in this thing. I'm going to walk. I'm going to walk through this thing. Because I know if I faint not, I'm going to reap. Whatever you may be facing this afternoon. If you faint not, he's going to he's going to bring you through. The title of this little short devotion word of encouragement whatever you want to call it whatever it may be to you ask less trust more ask less trust more and that reference scripture is Romans 8 and 18 Romans 8 and 18 and it reads as follows 
For I consider that the suffering of the present life are not worthy to be compared. Do not compare where you at, what you going through, because there's no comparison in the glory that's going to be received. Present life are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is about to be revealed to us and in us. Going through is a part. Trials and tribulations is a part of how God gets glory out of our lives. So we're not exempt because we are followers of Christ. We, we, we got to get that. And sometimes I wonder if that's one of the reasons why it's so hard. You know, there's many other reasons. But I wonder is, there's, is there many other, is this one of the reasons why it's so hard for people to surrender is because they see Christians going through. They see Christian suffering. They see the trials and tribulations that Christians go through. And they're saying, I don't want no parts of that. But none of us is exempt, whether you're in or out, whether you're a believer or not, you're going to go through. But your reward, if you go through as a Christian, you're going to gain heaven. Heaven is going to be your reward. But if you're going through and at the end of the battle, at the end of the fight, your reward is hell. So what battlefield do you want to be on? Because you have to make a decision. You have to make a choice. You can't straddle the fence and think you're going to make it in because you know of him or you once had a relationship with him or you're just trying to date him. That's not enough. God wants to be in a committed relationship with you. And we all know what a committed relationship look like. When you are in a committed relationship, you can't be dating and seeing other people. You can't be laying up with other people. You can't be going out with other people. We know what committed relationship looks like. And you know if you are in a committed relationship with God or are you committing adultery on him. You know. Let me get on into this. For I consider that the suffering of the present life, where you at, what you going through now, are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is about to be revealed to us and in us. Again, that's Romans 8 and 18. And I'm going to read that out of my study Bible just to break it down just a little, just a little better, just a little more. And it reads as follows. There is a price for being identified with Christ, along with being heirs of God. There's a price that we must pay. Jesus had to pay a price. His price was his life for you and I. So if he had to go through, we're going to go through as well. Paul also mentioned the suffering that Christians must face. There's no way around it. You're not exempt. It makes no difference who you are, who you think you are, who someone told you that you are, who you related to, where you come from, what you got, where you work. None of that matters. If you're a true follower of Christ, you must suffer. What kind of suffering are we to endure? For first century believers, there was economic and social persecution, and some even faced death. We, too, must pay a price for following Christ. In many parts of today's world, Christians face pressure just as severe as those, fa severe as those faced by Christians. Uh, uh, oh, hold on just as severe as those faced by Christ's first followers, even in countries 
where Christianity is tolerated or encouraged. Christians must not become complacent to live as Jesus did, serving others, giving up one's own right, rights, resisting pressure to conform to the world, always exact a price Nothing we suffer, however, can compare to the great price that Jesus paid to save us. Jesus paid a great price to save you and I, that we may have life and that we may have it more abundantly. So he understands suffering. He understands trials. He understands tribulations. But it's something that we also must face in our journey, in our walk. And I come to encourage you, you're going to get through this. You're going to get through this. I know it's tough. I know it's hard. I know you feel forsaken. I know you feel forgotten about. But I want you to know God is working on your behalf. I know it doesn't look like it. I know it doesn't feel like it. And I certainly know it doesn't smell like it. But just as he called Lazarus, he's going to call you. But if you faint not, you're going you're gonna to hear your name called. Just hang on in there. Walk this thing out. God has entrusted this trial, this tribulation to you. He said, I know she's not going to bow. I know he's not going to bow. I know she's not going to compromise. I know he's not going to compromise. But I know they're going to stand. God has confidence in you that you're going to stand. We live life forward and yet we often and yet we often can only understand it by looking back. There are many painful things we do not understand when they are happening to us. Have you ever been in a situation and it didn't make sense you just didn't understand why? Why now? Why this? Why that? How come this? How come that? This don't make sense. That doesn't make sense. But later, as we look back, we see things differently than we did before. Because we see the good that has come from the previous pain we endure. We go through some things that are painful. And in the moment of that pain, we don't understand because we're so focused on the pain, we're focused on how this thing, this unfortunate thing has made us feel. We looking at what we lost. We looking at what we what walked away, what left. But God is saying, you don't know the bigger picture. You don't see the bigger picture. There's something greater coming behind that. If you can just hang on just a little while longer, if you can stand just a little while longer. If you can be uncomfortable just a little while longer. If you can be talked about just a little while longer. If you can be misunderstood just a little while longer. If you can be misjudged just a little while longer. If you cannot be included just a little while longer. If you cannot be invited just a little while longer. My Lord, just a little while longer. David said, my heart is not proud, Lord. My eyes are not haughty. I do not concern myself with great matters or, or, things, or things too wonderful, wonderful for me. Psalms 131 and 1. David was simply saying, that there are things hidden in the mystery of God 
that no one can possibly understand. Sometimes, you know, his ways is not our ways. His thought is not our thoughts. Sometimes have you ever gone through something and when he brought you out, you said, well, Lord, why didn't you just, why didn't you just do it this way? His ways is not our ways. And there is a lesson that we, that God wants us to learn while we're going through. There's a reason why you had to take that loss. There's a reason why God moved you. There's a reason why God said you can't go. There's a reason why God said you can't be a part of. There's a reason why. God said no. There's a reason why God said not now. There's a reason why God said wait. There's a reason why. In our quiet times with God, we would be wise to ask fewer questions and simply trust God more. I'm going to read that again. We would be wise to ask fewer questions and simply trust God more. Because when we ask a lot of questions, it's because we're trying to fulfill that doubt. We're trying to fulfill the uneasiness. So, but if we just say, Lord, I just trust your will. I just trust your way. I just trust your decision. I don't know what you're doing. I don't understand which way I'm going. I don't even know why I had to go this way. But I trust you. I, it, it doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to others. But I trust you. I don't know why you had to remove me. But I trust you. I don't know why they walked away. But I trust you. I don't know why I no longer can attend. But I trust you. I don't understand why I no longer can go, but I trust you. I don't understand why I no longer can be a part of, but I trust you. Have you gotten to the place where you just say, I trust you? He will use everything we go through to bring about his purpose in our lives. No matter what we go through in this life, whether it was thing that was predestined for us to go through or we're going through because we was disobedient, whether we went through because we didn't trust him, because we didn't have faith in him, he will use everything that we go through. Nothing will be wasted. Everything that you and I go through in this lifetime, God is saying, I can use that. I can use that rejection. I can use that loss. I can use that pain. I can use that abortion. I can use that molestation. I can use it. I know you want to hide it. I know you don't want no one to know about it, but I can use it. That shame, I can use it. That hurt, I can use it. Those tears, I can use it. Will you give him what you don't want anyone else to know? Will you give him that thing that you're ashamed of? Will you give him that thing that you are embarrassed about? Will you give him that thing you don't want anyone else to know? That weakness, he said, I can use it. That stuttering, I can use it. Whatever you are dealing with, whatever you feel that is weak to you and to others, God is saying, I can use it. Give it to me. I can use it. I will turn it around for your good. I will work it out for your good. That miscarriage, I can use it. That divorce, I can use it. 
Will you give it to him today? Will you release it to him today? You're saying, I lost a child. He's saying, I can use it. I'm going through in my body. He's saying, I can use it. That diagnose that you haven't shared with no one, he's saying, I can use it. Whatever you're holding on to. And you're saying, I can't afford to let anyone know what I'm going through. God is saying, you can't afford not to. Because he's saying, I can use it. I don't want anyone to, to know that I lost my job. I got fired. He's saying, I can use it. I don't want anyone to know that I'm having problems with my children and we haven't spoken in 10 years. He's saying, I can use it. I don't want anyone to know that I haven't spoken to my parents. He's saying, but I can use it. What is it? What are you holding on to? That you're struggling to let him use it. You said I hurt someone and I hurt them to the core. He's saying, but I can use it. Nothing you've done, nothing you've gone through is useless. We serve a God. We have a Father that has said, I can use it. That brokenness, I can use it. Today's thought, God sees what you're going through. He knows where you at. You can't hide. You can hide it from me. You can hide it from family and friends, but you can't hide it from him. He knows where you are. He see that you're hiding. He see that you are embarrassed. He's saying, but if you give it to me, I can use it. God sees what you are going through. And he has a plan to bring you through. To bring you through it stronger, wiser, and more blessed than you were before. The devil don't want you to release it. The devil does not want you to share it. Because he does not want you to overcome it. He doesn't want you to be blessed for it. But if you can just get out of your way. And say, Lord, here I am. You know what I'm going through. You know what I'm facing. And I know... This is something that I can't share with anyone right now because I'm yet dealing with it. But Lord, I release it to you. I give it to you. For you to use to and for your glory. I wrote something on my Facebook today and it was before I even seen what the devotional was even about. And when I read it, I said, I got to come live. And it says, whatever, whatever area of your life that the enemy continues to attack is the area you will be most blessed in. Whether it's finances, whether it's relationships, whether it's relationships with, with, with your spouse, with your children, with your parents, no matter what it is. And you just can't seem to shake it. You just can't seem to overcome it. When you think that you're past it, you're right back in it. That is the area you're going to be most blessed in. God is going to get the complete glory out of your story. God does not want you and I to be ashamed or to be embarrassed of what we may be going through, what we may be facing. Because He's got a way 
of working that thing out for your good and for his glory. He has a way of flipping the script. He has a way to bring things together. He has a way of just working things out. He has a way of putting you in a better position than you was before you was in what you was in. Job, Job lost everything. And God blessed him double for his trouble. See, Job's situation was on display. He couldn't hide it. People knew what he had lost, what he was up against, what he had faced, what he had endured, the pain physically, mentally, emotionally, but it didn't touch his faith. So if faith is all you have left, hold on to it because that is what you're going to need to unlock your blessings. Job could have listened to his wife and just curse God and die. Where do you think he would have ended up at? Heaven wouldn't have been his portion. He just said, God giveth. And he taketh us away. God will allow some things. But God also will remove some things. And we have to be in a place. We got to have that relationship with him. That when he removes some things. When he removed people, that we okay with it. He understands it's not easy, but we have to know that he knows what's best. And he understands that sometimes things can be so uncomfortable until you just don't know which way to go. You don't know what to do. And you don't have anyone to reach out to because they're not going to understand. So some things you have to just take to him and just trust him with it. Because at the end of the day, he's the only one that can fix it. Have you ever been in a situation where only he could bring you out? Only he could bring you through? I'm in a situation now. That this situation can't, no one on this earth <laughs> can help me. They can possibly put a band-aid on it or maybe some ointment or maybe try to wrap it up, you know, with some gauze or some bandages. But I'm talking about bringing me through, bringing me out on the other side. I've had to put my complete trust in him. I don't have all the answers. I don't have all the details. I don't have all the pieces to the puzzle. All I have is his word. All I know of is his promises. And he just said, all I need you to do, I don't need you to do anything else. I don't even want you trying to figure a way out. He said, all I need you to do is just to trust me. God is saying to you today, you have found yourself in a situation. You don't even, you can't even explain how you got there. You don't even know why you're there. But what God is saying to you is just trust me. He don't want you to do anything else. Now it's going to go against the world system. It's going to go against the norm. It's going to go against what the family is telling you to do. It's going to go against what family is asking you to do. But God's saying if you just trust me. Because I'm trying to get them also on a level of trusting me. That they don't trust in the things of this world that is going to be temporary. So, but if they can see your trust in me, they'll begin 
to also trust me. So your trust in him is important. Your trusting in him is to help your children. Your trusting in him is to help your friends trust him. Because sometimes it's hard to trust something that you can't tr trace. So it's hard to trust something that you can't see or feel. But he's saying, trust me anyway. What has you got to lose? You're already in a situation that you can't fix, that you can't bring yourself out of. What do you have to lose by just trusting me? And when they see what I'm going to do in your life, when they see how I'm going to turn your life around, when they see how I'm going to bring you out, when they see how I'm going to bring you through, I have now gained another trust. Because you stood. Because you didn't compromise. Because you didn't try to get out of it. Because you didn't try to make excuses. But you begin to understand the assignment. It began to make sense. <clears throat> that God, you got me here for a reason. I'm going through this for a reason. It's bigger than me. It's not even about me. But you chose me. You have confidence in me to go through this. And I'm going to go through it. All God wants you and I to do is trust him. I'm not one of the ones that's going to tell you it's always easy. I'm not I'm sorry, I'm not going to do that. I can't do that. Because God will ask you to do some things that's difficult, that's challenging. You can conquer it. Because he, why? He said, we are more than conquerors. But in the moment of your going through, you're not thinking of yourself as a conqueror. You're not thinking of yourself as an overcomer. But I come to remind you, that you are an overcomer and that you will make it through this. God is going to bring you out and you're going to be better than you was before you enter in into this situation. And people are going to know that there is a God. People are going to know that they can trust God as well. All God wants you and I to do is to just trust him. That's all he asks. If you can just use the mustard seed of faith. If that's all you have is just a use that. You don't have to try to measure your faith with someone else's faith because you're going to be disappointed. You're going to be discouraged. Operate in the faith where you at and ask God to help grow your faith so that you can trust him more, so that you can trust him on a much higher level. But don't try to compare your faith with someone else. Ask him to increase your faith in him. Now, that's going to come with... <laughs> know what you're asking for. Because in order for him to increase your faith, you're going to have to go through something. There's going to be some things shaken up in your life. There's going to be some things removed from your life. But he's saying this is what you asked for. He can't elevate your faith without you going through so that faith can be tested. I pray that something has been said that will cause you to trust him more. I don't care what you're going through. It doesn't make a difference how long you've been going through it.
You say, well, Yolanda, I've never been through anything like this. This is a hurt on a different level. I don't even understand why I'm going through it. I don't even understand why me. I was that person that would give the shirt off their back. I'm that person that was always available to others. Why, why me? Why not you? God chose you for a reason. He handpicked you for a reason. So if God has chosen you, it's a privilege, it's an honor. Because God has confidence that you're going to walk this thing through, that you're going to walk this thing out. And he is going to be able to get glory out of your story. That's all God wants to do is to get glory out of your story. He wants to show the non-believers that they can believe. He wants to show those that don't trust that they can trust. But he needs a willing vessel to work through. And if he has chosen you, that's a privilege and it's an honor. It doesn't have to feel good for it to be good. And each time you pass a test, you graduate to another level. God doesn't want us to stay stagnant. God doesn't want us to stay in kindergarten or preschool, elementary school. He wants us to graduate. Are you graduating? Are you growing? Are you maturing? Are you trusting him on another level? God wants you and I. He wants us to grow with him. And if God has chosen you, he's saying it's time. It's time for graduation. It's time for elevation. Put on your cap and gown. It's time to graduate. You did this. You made it. You didn't give up. You didn't throw in the towel. You didn't walk away. Even when the test got hard, you didn't give up. When the trials got difficult, you didn't give up. When you didn't have any help, you didn't walk away. You now have graduated. And your father, he's proud of it. He's proud of it. He's ready to reward you. He's ready to bless you. He's seen the tears. He's seen the pain. He's seen the hurt. But through it all, he knew you was not going to turn back. He knew you wasn't going to walk away. He knew you wasn't going to give up. He knew you was going to stand. He knew you was going to stay. He knew you was going to graduate. And now here, here is your reward. God wants to reward you for your faithfulness, not for your perfectness but for your faithfulness. Because no matter what you was up against, you stayed the course. You didn't drop out. You showed up every day. Now he's ready to reward you for your faithfulness. He knows what you went through. He knows what you faced. He knows what you lost. He knows who walked away. 
He knows who wasn't there for you. He knows who lied on you. He knows who rejected you. He said, but because you hung in there, I got to bless you. I must reward you. You may not get a reward from man. You may never be appreciated by man. But God will always reward his children. Those that are faithful. Those that don't give up. And sometimes God will ask you to do some things. That people don't understand. But God is counting on you. To stand. No matter what. Stand anyway. Show up anyway. Walk through it anyway. Walk it out anyway. Even if you have to physically do it. All by yourself God said we're going to the other side he never told us <laughs> what we was going to have to go through or encounter to make it to the other side but that was a promise we're going to the other side whatever it takes whatever you have to go through whatever you lose whoever walk away you just be determined to make it to the other side. Your healing is on the other side. Your blessing is on the other side. Your reward is on the other side. It's on the other side. So you got to be willing to go through to get to the other side. Speak life. Speak life over yourself, over your friends, over your foes, over your family. Speak life over those that gave up on you, pushed you aside. They said you'll never mount anything. They said you'll never go anywhere. They said you'll never make it through. They went as far as said you'll never make it out. Water their garden. You say, Yolanda, I just, I just don't know if I can do that. You can't, you can't afford not to. Because we have to love those that hate us. We have to love those that despitefully use us, takes advantage of us. We have to love them anyway. Because if God can send his son for us, surely you can love someone that has done you wrong, that has mistreated you, that has lied on you. Sure you can. And you must. So water their garden. Because every time you water their garden, God is going to make sure your garden is watered. Every time you plant good seed in their garden, God is going to make sure there's good seed planted in your garden. It goes hand in hand. So no matter what someone has done to you, love them anyway. Love them anyway. You have nothing to lose, but you have everything to gain. Until next time. I pray that something was said that will cause you to trust the process. Trust the process. No one ever told you it was going to be easy. But trust the process so you can reap the benefits of your obedience. 
Obedience is better than a sacrifice. Don't sacrifice your reward, your benefit, your blessing because of what someone going to say. How someone is going to treat you. what, How someone is going to think about you. Be obedient. If God brings you to it, he's going to see you through it. It's tough now. But when you look back, you're going to say it was for my good. Not only for my good, but for all those that know my story. For all those that know what I was going through. For all those that know what I walked through. Now they know. If he, if God did it for her, he'll do it for me. Enjoy your blessed day. It's already blessed. It's up to you how you choose to walk it out. Until next time. Until next time. Trust God. Trust God. Don't trust the pain. Don't trust what you're going through. Don't trust where you're at. But trust God. He's got your back. He's got your back. And he's going to bring you through. God bless.